Steph Curry had a stunning first quarter, 21 points on seven of nine from the field. DZ, I'll start with you. How can this team get others going early on? Well, we talk about the others. Well, Kayvon Looney was on the baseline in the Denver Mavericks series, getting a lot of easy buckets. To uh, B. Woods' point, if you're having Draymond at the top of the key, Celtics will make him make shots. Two of 12, Kayvon Looney, one of four. So how do you get those guys going in the starting lineup as well? Jordan Poole, I know he's going to make shots. He's going to be more aggressive. But once again, I just marvel over the Celtic defense right now, the way they scramble, the way they communicate, the way they have that helper-to-helper -helper moniker on, on point. So get others moving, rebound the basketball better, but make sure you're more efficient with your cuts because you know you're playing against a focused defense. Yeah, I'm also looking at Jordan. I'm also looking at Jordan Poole. Uh, he, he's, the, he's that guy that has really stepped up well for this team. He's played incredible basketball. But man, oh man, he was missing in game one on the offensive end. And defensively, he's been challenged throughout the series. And so you understand that, hey, we're going to give up some defense because that's not his calling card. But if we're going to give up some defense and offensively, you got to give us something. Jordan Poole is going to have to have a couple of big games. He doesn't have to be the man every single night. But I'm looking for Jordan Poole to have a couple games where he's 21, 22, 23 points. And then that's going to be able to take some pressure off of Steph Curry. Also, Klay Thompson is going to have to hit buckets as well. But I really have my eye on Jordan Poole. Would you have thought, Brendan, if I read you Jason Tatum's stat line following game one that the Celtics would have won? No, if you told me Jason Tatum was going, if you if you told me Jason Tatum was going to shoot three of seventeen, I was like, man, the Golden State Warriors are going to win this game by about twenty points. But credit Jason Tatum, this is something that he wasn't doing early on in his career. When he wasn't scoring, he was snoring. But that is not where he is right now. When he's not scoring the basketball, he does a great job of getting his teammates involved. We talk, we saw Marcus Smart call out Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown early in the season for not doing that. And now we're seeing the fruits of their labor. They have learned that when we get the ball, we don't always have to shoot it. And when teams give us extra attention, let's find our teammates. Jason Tatum did a great job with 13 assists. Even though he didn't shoot the ball well, those 13 assists were very key to this Golden State, I mean, this Boston team being able to beat the Golden State Warriors at home and shock a lot of people. Yeah, B. Wood, you hit it right on the head. I was so impressed with Jason Tatum because, once again, being a superstar doesn't mean when you're staying aggressive you have to continue to shoot the ball. Like you mentioned, 3 of 17, most young guys in our game today would continue to take bad shots, but he stayed aggressive and found his teammates. How many times did he find Derek White there in the second half for wide-open three-point shots in the corner at the top of the key? To your point, 13 huge assists down the stretch, rotating on defense. So it really let me know that Jason Tanner was really locked in on all aspects of the game, not just scoring the basketball, then being able to finish the game. So I was very impressed with JT's game.